Hey, Dan, thanks for joining us today. Hey, Katie, good to see you again. Good seeing you again. Uh, so we'll just run a brief inter um brief interview about us and like what group gets is and what Dan is doing here today. Um, if you have not subscribed to our channel yet, please do so. Um, we have plenty of interviews with creators such as Dan um, talking about their newest and latest in their gadget development. Um, so I think if you have already subscribed, you already know who Dan is. Um, but to give a brief TLDR, um, group gets is an online campaign uh, platform where you can create and distribute your own creations. Um, if you want to create a campaign, go visit us at groupgets.com. The process is really easy, and you can get started within, like, 10 minutes. But enough about us. Dan, can you provide a brief introduction about yourself? Uh, sure. I am a longtime electrical engineer, computer scientist. I do a lot of embedded stuff, and I am a big part of the maker movement and um, enjoy uh, sharing my stuff uh, in GitHub and on my website, a lot of open source stuff. And recently, I've been working with Group Gets on uh, thermal imaging cameras, uh, TCAM Mini, and then hopefully now TCAM. Rad. And to even discuss further now with your newest campaign coming up, the G-Core. And yep. so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I um, am a big fan of the ESP32. I've done a lot of work with it. I think it's a great uh, microprocessor and uh, module. And when I was uh, designing, I wanted, always wanted to design a thermal imaging camera for myself. And um, I ultimately ended up using it. And I built a board that had a display on it. And I call that board G-Core for gadget core because I intended it to be like the base of a lot of portable GUI or display-oriented things. Stuff that you would could power on a battery that would have great graphics performance. And so I use that on uh, TCAM. And this is... The G Core. It has a an LCD screen and then a bunch of stuff on the back and can be powered by a LiPo battery. Has a USB C port which lets you charge it and uh, load software into it. It can be programmed in Arduino or the Espresso IDF and even MicroPython. So lots of flexibility there. And I use it to make this gadget, which is that looks familiar. Bam! <laughs> so you should be able to see my ugly mug is a thermal image in the front <laughs> of that screen. Mm -hmm. um, and it worked really great. The, so the graphics performance let me get the full nine frames per second out of uh, the lepton and a super responsive user interface. So exactly. anyway, that's my basic intro to G-Core. That's Brad. It's so funny to see it just evolved where it is now because I know you've been working on this for seven months now, probably more to be honest, but I know it's like with the part shortage and everything, you know, now it's really cool to see it in full fruition. So yeah, right. So I got bit by the pandemic part shortage. Mm -hmm. I've actually been working on, um, I guess I really was working on the thermal imaging cameras as a COVID over COVID project. Mm -hmm. And so we got TCAM mini, um, done and there was, uh, we could get the parts at least to do some builds. Uh, but, uh, G core did take a while longer and it, it sort of happened during the really thick of all that. So it is nice, finally, God, finally to have parts start flowing again. Yeah. And we can build, and we're now able to build G Core. So, yeah. yeah. No, congrats. And yeah, for sure. We're really happy that you finally get to see in the campaign. And, you know, without further ado, you know, like you were mentioning, you know, the G Core was originally focused on the integration of the TCAM Mini. Um, but obviously, um, as maybe even like some viewers have seen in your video that you've made, which link below in the description, um, there's a lot more, you know, capabilities that it is able to produce. So, you know, why, what made you want to expand the application of the G Core unit? Yeah. So, you know, I use a lot of dev boards over the years and I've put together a lot of systems and often I found like the dev boards I would buy were aimed at really, you know, being as inexpensive as possible. And so they didn't have like they didn't have the features I wanted. For example, um, you know they use a lot of them uh, to get kind of nerdy. Use spy interface to drive the LCD display, but then that has like an upper limit because the LCD displays like can you know generally not always run at high speeds. And so I wanted faster than that. So I G Core has a special circuit which lets me drive the display at a much higher rate, so I get better graphics. Um, a lot of dev boards, like, they don't have, like, the way to easily, like, turn them on or off. Like, 
you know, they, you just plug the battery in and they're running. Well, you're going to have to include in a switch or something. And then like on LiPo systems, it's not good to run the LiPo down too far, but you know, there's not generally no way like to automatically power the system off when the battery's low. Well, so I, that G core has a complete soft power control, press a button. It powers on code running on the SP 32 can decide to shut it off. G, there's another microprocessor in G core, which will monitor the battery voltage and it will turn it off. Like if the battery is critically low, so it protects your LiPo battery. Another thing that I always found on these other boards was like, if they had LiPo batteries, they always hung the load, the circuitry of the board on the same output as the charger that the LiPo was on, which always made it hard for the charger to understand when the battery charging was done and always was putting some amount of charge into the battery, which is not good for the life of a LiPo battery. So G core has a full, what's called a power path charging circuit. So it will route power to the battery and route power to the rest of circuitry separately. And it can power the rest of the circuitry automatically off the battery when necessary, like if there's no USB power, and it can share. But when the battery is charged, G-Core stops putting energy into the battery. So it's a better charger than a lot of those systems. And then I wanted like stuff like a dimmable backlight. So G-Core has a way, like the ESP3, you can say, hey, I want the light at 50% brightness or 100% brightness. And G-Core has the ability to monitor the internal voltages. So you can see what the battery voltage is. You can see what USB voltage is. You can see how much current G-Core is taking to run. So you could estimate, like, battery life. You can see how much charge is going into the battery, so how, you know, hard it's charging. So so stuff like that um, I always wanted, and so I put it into my own design. And then a bunch of other little features, like there's a – a lot of times boards don't have a real-time clock or they need extra power. So G-Core has a real-time clock and that clock can turn it on. Mm-hmm. So you can configure a G-Core to power itself up at any time. And G-Core can also do smart things like if it powers off, you can configure it so that when the battery's recharged, it powers back on. Or when charging starts, it powers back on. So lots of features that I always sort of wanted, I put into this board. Yeah. Definitely. And, it, you know, I was thinking kind of like it's like the gooey Swiss knife or Swiss army knife of, uh, <laughs> of what I can tell so far. So that's yeah. awesome, man. Yeah, what I really wanted, what I really wanted was like a platform that took care of all this sort of housekeeping stuff of making portable gadgets. So I didn't ever have to think about it again. I had software support I could just throw in the library. And, and, and it was like it had all these features, like you said, a Swiss army knife. But basically... I could just think about the application. I didn't have to have to think about worrying about these other things. How would I do that again? Just mm-hmm. have it there. Certainly. Yeah. And, you know, speaking of kind of like just having everything, you, you mentioned the library. So um, if you're not aware already, the G-Core has a supporting Arduino library and has an Adaf- Adafruit compatible graphics driver and supports LVGL. If you're not familiar, that is Light and Versatile Graphics Library. Um, what is your experience with that? Because they are an open source um uh, program or, or at least an open source uh, 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 graphics or GUI um, uh, pro- so- software project. Yeah, well, I think I think LVGL is a really amazing piece of software. So it so it lets you create GUIs on embedded devices, lots and not just ESP32, but lots of other microprocessors and a lot of screens. And it supports touchscreen input. It supports keyboards. I mean, it's really a capable thing. And it has evolved over the years so that you can now, with LDGL, make apps that run on embedded systems, like something you would build with G-Core, or maybe like even something you'd put in a coffee machine or a printer or something that um, look and behave a lot with the sophistication and polish of like a mobile app. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's really different than sort of the maker world of, I mean... I think that the libraries and stuff like that have evolved with Arduinos and stuff, the Adafruit library is fantastic, but it's hard sort of to make beautiful, beautiful, sophisticated graphs with that. And LVGL fulfills that need. So I am a big fan. I've used it on a lot of my personal products. I've used it in stuff I've designed for other people, commercial stuff. And uh, the people at LVGL, the, the guy, the main guy and a couple of his supporting people, they're really responsive. They try to keep it, up to date and fixed and they have a really vibrant online community. So I'm a, I'm a fan. 
Got it. Yeah. No, that's really cool because I, you know, I personally have not not familiar with it, but it would be really cool just to kind of see like where that, um, you know, experience and that partnership goes develops into. So that's really that's really awesome. Yeah, and you know, speaking of, he will have we will we'll have all these resources listed in the description below. Um, it is also available on his campaign page. Um, on group gets within each of our campaigns, you can go to the G Core campaign itself if you have any questions. Uh, that will be in our updates, or excuse me, not the updates tab, but within our discussion tab. Um, Dan will be posting more updates. He already has all the specifications of um, all the different uh, GitHub's um, resources that you can uh, review yourself. Um, again, uh, he has created a video of just explaining the overall of the, um, of the G Corps. So we'll have that link below. Um, and we'll also, again, like I mentioned, the GitHub links, but as well, you can visit um, dangeliodesigns.com um, more specifically for the G Corps as well. Um, well, thank you so much, Dan. I think um, that's all my questions for now. And obviously, as um, the G Corps picks up a little bit more steam with now that the campaign has been running, um, just fairly recently, um, I believe we launched about a week ago or so. Uh, so we will be promoting this um, throughout the entire next month and a half or so. So we're looking forward to getting this out there for you. Great. Thank you very much, Katie. Thanks for the time. Good to see you again. Good seeing you, Dan. Thanks so much.